In a small South Carolina town, where it seems little has changed since the Civil War, 16-year-old Ethan is powerfully drawn to Lena, a new classmate with whom he shares a psychic connection and whose family hides a dark secret that may be revealed on her 16th birthday. Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll Before the Middle of Nowhere There were only two kinds of people in our town, the stupid and the stuck. My father had affectionately classified our neighbors. The ones who are bound to stay are too dumb to go. Everyone else finds a way out. There was no question which one he was, but I'd never had the courage to ask why. My father was a writer, and we lived in Gateland, South Carolina, because the Waits always had. Since my great-great-great-great-granddad, Ellis Waite, fought and died on the other side of the Santee River during the Civil War. Only folks down here didn't call it the Civil War. Everyone under the age of 60 called it the War Between the States, while everyone over 60 called it the War of Northern Aggression, as if somehow the North had baited the South into the war over a bad bale of cotton. Everyone, that is, except my family. We called it the Civil War. Just another reason I couldn't wait to get out of here. Galen wasn't like the small towns you see in the movies, unless it was a movie from about 50 years ago. We were too far from Charleston to have a Starbucks or a McDonald's. All we had was a Dairy King, since the gentries were too cheap to buy all new letters when they bought the Dairy King. The library still had a card catalog, the high school still had chalkboards, and our community pool was Lake Moultrie, warm brown water and all. You could see a movie at the Cineplex about the same time it came out on DVD, but you had to hitch a ride over to Somerville by the community college. The shops were on Main, the good houses were on River, and everyone else lived south of Route 9, where the pavement disintegrated into chunky concrete stubble, terrible for walking, but perfect for throwing at angry possums, the meanest animals alive. You never saw that in the movies. Gatlin wasn't a complicated place. Gatlin was Gatlin. The neighbors kept watch from their porches in the unbearable heat, sweltering in plain sight. But there was no point. Nothing ever changed. Tomorrow would be the first day of school, my sophomore year at Stonewall Jackson High. And I already knew everything that was going to happen. Where I would sit, who I would talk to, the jokes, the girls, who would park where. There were no surprises in Gatlin County. We were pretty much the epic center of the middle of nowhere. At least that's what I thought when I closed my battered copy of Slaughterhouse Five, clicked off my iPod, and turned out the light on the last night of summer. Turns out, I couldn't have been more wrong. There was a curse. There was a girl. And in the end, there was a grave. I never even saw it coming. <laughs>